Hi, my name is Mark Jordan, producer of Hal Jackson's Legacy. I was blessed with the opportunity to meet with a lot of collective souls to share their stories on behalf of Hal Jackson. Sit back and enjoy the first part of Hal Jackson's Legacy. Thank you. My name is Hal Jackson. Okay, so how long have you been living in Tucson, Arizona? I came to Tucson in November of, I remember it was November 2nd, 1972. I can remember very plainly because the next night, the Rolling Stones and Stevie Wonder were at the community center. <laughs> and I went down there thinking I was going to get in. <laughs> I mean, there were more people outside hoping they could get a ticket and they were in that little, you know how small that community center is. And it got so, so good, bad, every one of you at that Tucson police came out, man, and tear gassed everybody. <laughs> so and that was two days, two days in the Tucson, man. <laughs> Hi, this is Angela. I'm Hal's sister, like, we're like three years apart. One of my earliest memories of my brother, my oldest brother, was my grandmother telling me that when Hal was three, they were passing by a Dairy Queen, and Hal asked Lois, that's because that's what we called her, Lois, wouldn't you like something nice and refreshing? Did it really happen? My grandmother swore it did. Hal was the first grandchild from her father, and she loved him as the heir to the name, not the spare. I have memories of the artist, he worshipped John Lennon, and then he discovered the world of reggae. He grew dreadlocks and submerged himself in the music that I mentioned he could sing. He was my mother's firstborn at 14 years of age. Until he left us, he was my oldest brother, someone that I could text and ask him for wisdom. I love him, and I miss him dearly. Peace out, brother. Bye-bye. <laughs> I had this friend, and he lived the good life. My mother used to sing around the house, and you know, but when he brought that guitar into the house, I was like, okay, music is the thing, you know. So I, I would, uh, he would tell me not to mess with his guitar, but of course, that's the first thing I would do when he left. And um, you know, I just started picking to the radio, trying to play stuff that would sound good to my, to my young ass ears, you know, just, just picking around, just discovering and um and that was about 11 12 years old you know, as a musician in new mexico mm -hmm. california um not with this band but with other groups you know uh did a thing with a group called the one drop redemption uh played las vegas california and i was only with them for a short time but okay. uh, still, yeah, yeah. Um, One Blood Band used to do like a tri-state area. And it's a lot of fun, man. You know, it's a lot of fun. And, but, you know, like I said, you got to love it because if you're not making a whole heap of dough and uh, you get in that van with six, seven guys. <laughs> yeah. The gears in the back of the van and you're... <laughs> The cat's laid up next to you snoring like a mug. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love that stuff yeah. to deal with that. You get, you know, it's, it's life on the road. It ain't easy, man, but it's fun. Was Hal Jackson as a father? He was amazing. He was always there when I needed him. He was always joking and laughing. He always had the biggest smile on his face. If you had a bad day, he knew how to make it better. I remember doing a lot of things growing up with him. I did photography because of him. He tried to teach me how to play the guitar. <laughs> that didn't work out very well. I was not musically inclined like him. <laughs> Gabe Siniceros, AKA Gabe Culture, sending all my love and condolences to the Jackson family. I was an automatic fan of Rockers Uptown Man when I first moved to Tucson back in 2012. It was really refreshing to hear Roots music in town. And me and Hal became automatic friends. We keep in touch and constantly be talking about musical projects we wanted to involve ourselves in. 
how it was contagious, man, his laugh, his good vibes. You couldn't help but become good friends with Hal. He, I feel like he was friends with everybody he knew, and he made people feel that way. I think if I take anything from Hal's passing is tomorrow's not promised, so let's not procrastinate on the projects that and the things that we want to get accomplished in life, because any of us may not wake up tomorrow. Rest in peace, Hal. Much love to the Jackson family. All my love. Steve Mann from Asheville, North Carolina. I first met Hal when I moved to Tucson in 1989. He was working in a uh, Jamaican restaurant and we uh, discovered we shared a love for reggae music and all kind of music, uh, really, uh, rock and roll and gospel. And I started going to some of his shows and would take uh, pictures of the bands and he was a willing subject for some of my photo projects uh, for school. Um, yeah, just kind of hit it off immediately with Hal, you know, just a real kindred spirit and had a lot of adventures, uh, hiking adventures in Southern Arizona and a lot of um, really amazing journeys up to Hopi land in Northern Help Arizona. Out, uh, a lot of times, you know, he helped me up there and uh, going into the Supai Canyon with uh, meditations. He, he helped me take him down there into the Grand Canyon. Uh, meditations, two times we had, we went there into the bottom of the Grand Canyon and uh, we had some good times down there with the Supai people down there and uh, that's the most memorable, you know, time that I known him and uh, know him from. <laughs> Yeah, Rockers of Town, me and uh, Amo Chip, Amo Chip Dabney. How really created that bridge by giving me a reason to come down here. You know, and he was, he was, he was totally open to me. He said, yeah, man, stay with me. Yeah, man, this is, you know, introducing me around and stuff. And people had seen me play down here. Uh, bass with the Nigerian All-Stars. Being seen with him and playing with him gave me instant credibility <laughs> as as a righteous person, right? Like, Hal wasn't hanging out with anybody that was trading sideways. So, that was good for me, and, and I needed that. Scott Anderson. The father was, was so kind. My father everyone he knew. He moved slow. with each other for uh god man off and on for about 20 something years so he and i and, and scott anderson were original mem original members of the reggae band one blood that i was talking okay. about we used to do these tri-state uh jaunts <laughs> you know with those guys there's really a feeling of family even though we all play with different guys uh, also you know Mm -hmm. uh, they they all play with whoever else they want to play with also, but uh, the bass player uh, Levi Levi Granick. Uh -huh. I've known Levi since he was probably thirteen or something like that. My first gigs ever in this town, any type of reggae gigs. He got me my first ones. I, I filled in on guitar with One Blood when I was nineteen years old at General Ben's. I couldn't even. I wasn't old enough to drink. They told me, you can come in, but you can't get off the stage, <laughs> you know, because I was too young. And uh, and uh, so that's when I first, you know, Hal, Hal just brought me into the reggae scene. Going to Hal's house and just hanging with him for a couple of hours, just doing these songs, watching him and being around when him and Levi were in the creative process. You know, that, that that's what it's all about for me, you know, is like, what is life? Life is creativity. If you're allowing the creativity of life and you're around that vibe, to elevate the positivity of, of the possibilities, you know. <laughs> so I got to be around that a lot. <laughs> I found my son playing the hut and 
He gave out a shout out to Black Man Clay and the One Heartbeat. I thought that was beautiful, you know? He recognized it. Hell, I'd love to see me get out there and move my body. He thought I was the greatest front man that he's ever seen. How it was like just being a part of music in general. It's like when you're producing and you get an idea and then the idea pops in your head and you just add it in. That's what I that's how I viewed it. You know what I mean? I was I was an added element to something that he was doing. He seen a creation within that moment and he was like, you know what? Come lion. Boom. Put me in there and just let me look. Eight hours, huh? Eight full hours. A day, sir. <laughs> For the boss. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and no, actually, who is for this? money. <laughs> for money. For, for the George Washington, eh? No, those, not him either. <laughs> those, those little, I mean, on the dollar bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's who's on the bill. Along with uh, Ben Franklin. Uh-huh. And do you do you Andy, have a greater Andy, affinity? Brandy Andy. Brandy Andy. Brandy Andy eh? uh, who's so who's your favorite present? I don't have one. You don't have I had to say, yeah, I would say probably Jimmy Carter. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Of all of them. Uh-huh. I'd say he's the most you realize he was afraid of a rabbit. <laughs> well everybody's afraid of something. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. Stoicism I saw in her was a bit different. It was stoicism mixed with extreme ethics and a lot of humbleness around him. He always made sure that he saw the bright side and the positive side of it and everything around him. I call this the hellest way of life. When I met him, he was working the day doing paper distribution, and afternoon, janitor work. And at night, he was a musician. Not just a musician, he carried a message of harmony, peace, and love. Through his eyes, I was able to see the America that TV and even books kept for us. The natives of America, and what they have been through. The African Americans, and everyone who is not traditionally white. Yet, he never hated the white man. He only hated the segregation and the system that kept the distance so far between them. Hal was a poet by life, not just by words. He was able to teach me the difference between the many factions and politics in government of the USA, who control what and why, a true education is rare and he was a teacher in many ways. Testament song. My brother, won't you come back here? He's a nice spirit. He was a righteous brother and a great musician. Al was a great, uh, you know, wordsmith with a uh, subtle eye to uh, historical context, you might say, historical and cultural context. And you can find that in his. Uh, Songwriter. Hal has always been very supportive, very sweet, very humble, respectful, considerate of people in their time. He just always like a very good supporter of others and had a very unique laugh. I remember that. I will always um, cherish and appreciate the relationship and connection that I had with him and getting a chance to actually um work with him a little bit. Because I was a family man too, you know what I mean? He's something that brothers should be looking at. I mean brothers for real. Brothers out here particularly. Black family man. Dad loved him dearly. He gave me a job when I came out of a real abusive relationship. I had very little money and I had a nice ass drum set. That's all I had. And I told Hal. And Hal was like, can you play? I was like, I'll play for you right now. He's like, all right. So I went to his house. He didn't have to let me be there. I played and I did my route. And he was into it the whole time, the whole time. First ever gig was playing with Hal. I rehearsed at his guest house in the back and some things. He saw that I got really, you know, dedicated and devoted to it. I became really good. I, you know, but nothing would ever stop Hal. The last time I saw Hal, I was driving out of Tucson from that 
uh, from doing those shows. It was probably like, you know, five, six years ago. And I drove past the Occupy Tucson just to take a look at it. One of the last things I saw was Hal just sitting there at the table. He, I don't think he even noticed that I was driving by and didn't even see me, but I saw him sitting there. And so my last thought of seeing him was just like, look how dedicated he is, man. It's just amazing, you know? His last text to me was a picture of a whole bunch of people standing outside Papa Ranger's old reggae uh, 12 tribe store on uh, on 6th Ave. He said to me, you know, uh, one day a whole bunch of rosters got together and it was just, that's all it said. And it was, he's like, I wanted you to, you know, have this for history. And he sent it to me. It was like him and Papa Ranger and a whole bunch of these guys that were in town. And Very like, respective. You know, he don't like, he don't like to get in nobody's business. He, he, he like to stay to himself. And he like to be positive. How always was a positive person and a quiet soul, you know? How was, you know, I love how because he put, like I said, he put up with me. <laughs> and I was hard on how. Me, personally, was hard on how, you know? But, you know, he, only reason why, because he was quiet. That's why I picked on the priority. You know what I mean? But <laughs> he, he put up with me. You know what I'm saying? I guess he understood what I, what, what I was going through. But like I said, I respect how to the maximum. I did a, I did a show with him and Scotty at the last exit. Me and my son played bass, and I played guitar with him. And the drummer came up. He always was looking for a show. My name Casper. Hope you're landing the version and the style from a Mad Hal Jackson memorial. Nothing but love and respect every time. Gonna miss you, dog. But I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Like I said, family and friends we ain't seen in years. All up in the house, hanging out this place called the Hideout. And you know what? It's hidden. Good people in the house, man. So, like I said, this is a, a memorial for my man, Hal Jackson. Enough times, man. I sat in when he used to do the, he did these short videos. And I used to come in and do some, some uh, uh, lessons, you know what I mean? Like, get, like words. I would, teach, I would teach words that he would use in one of his online courses. You know what I mean? It was, a, they were, it was all about learning, you know what I mean? As we were teaching, I was teaching him important words for the world. And he was conveying them to his peeps. So it worked out really good, man. One of many, and I played music with him for years. Did a song that we just did tonight with him on guitar called uh, Mr. President on my first album in 1997. Original Landlord, check it. So big respect every time, I'm telling you, Hal, Hal Jackson. That's my ninja. I miss you, man. No joke. We're here for him. That I would have got to know him like more as, as a person than just an entertainer, because like an entertainer, like it, that's how I know him. But like he's he's an awesome dude, you know. Yeah. He's, he's cool. Like one time I was walking back home for a reggae concert, and then he stopped and picked me up and, and took me home. Okay, this car he drove me home like that one time. That was very nice of him. It's so hard when a sweet spirit goes on like this, you know, it's like that <laughs> seems like the good ones go too early, you know, or some of them do. Um, and uh, Hal is just a really gentle, really a poetic uh, spirit. Hal had
had this crazy, cool, easy-going personality. He always took his time and enunciated his words, being precise, and got right to the point. It was like as if he talked about a subject he was seeing in his mind's eye and developed it into creation. He always thought about what he was saying and not randomly spitting out something. We had many deep rap sessions, as they were called back then. Hal and I always remained good friends up until the graduation where we would hang out and just get in heavy rap sessions. He's gone now, but never will be forgotten. My brother now shares the heavens with Jimi Hendrix and Bob Marley and many other stars in heaven. So, until we meet again, my brother, save me a space in heaven. Live forever. How? Tucson's got a lot of talent to be on that wall with certain people is, uh, it's a feather in your cap, you know? And um, I never expected it. I never really thought it would ever happen. A lot of musicians that I really respect in Tucson are there. So that, man, really made me feel good. That's why I started the Tucson Musician Museum because, I mean, there's guys here in town that, you know, when they, when they leave town or go on tour or to Europe or whatever, you know, they're treated like, you know, rock stars, whether it's classical or jazz or, you know, a multi, you know, genres of music that come out here, plus our own Southwest sound that we produce. Um, it's, it's, it's really unique. And, uh, I wanted these people to be recognized by the community on, on their contribution to the people that set the bar of excellence for the rest of us to follow. Uh, as well as help educate young musicians that are coming out and uh, directing them and, and supporting them as well because uh, the kids are our future. we got to keep them informed about music the right way. Um, he was a brother, man. We, like I knew Hal for probably 40 years. Uh, we, went to, uh, we went to college together out of Pima College. And a few times together, I loved his music, and um, probably the first reggae band in Tucson, because we were doing uh, Jimmy Cliff and Bill Poles. He stayed pretty much with with reggae, and I, I that's when my blues career was taken off. So me, him, and and uh, David Dean were the only guys that really even understood what reggae was back then. You know, I was always dedicated to that, you know, that message. That's basically all we are. We're just messengers, man, you know? And uh, uh, there ain't no rock stars. There's just some that are luckier than others. But, you know, our, our duty as musicians is to uh, keep the message out there to the people that, uh, you know, we can hopefully enlighten their lives and put a smile on their face through t troubling times. And how, how was uh, really good people and it was an honor to know. 2016, both him and I were inducted in the Tucson Musicians Museum. We had a great time hanging out uh, during the show and after the show. It was good to see how I had played with them back in the mid 80s uh, with this band called One Blood. And we, we, you know, we jammed with each other throughout the years, but it was good to see him at that presentation. And also it was an honor to be honored with him on the same night. It was a blessing. The greats here in Tucson. Um, I didn't know him personally, but the time at, uh, I did meet with him, he, got a, he had a common face. You know, he, you know he's been, a, been here in Tucson for a long time. He's like an icon. And, um, and people like that, you know, you like to put some people into your your life. To the Mosai, Rastafari, King of King Selassie, Joe, Ayman, General Chefari, reggae singer from the Ivory Coast, West Africa. Ayman, you know, Rasta never died. First time I met Hard Jackson, 
I heard about it then and I went to see him perform at the heart and uh, you know I met that spirit, that positive spirit, that man uh, was playing the guitar and singing you know and you know when Rasta see Rasta, when Rasta see someone positive you know we recognize each other so at the end of his show we talk and uh, you know he introduced uh, himself uh, how many years he has been doing reggae music and so I was impressing him you know on stage. I know right now he is just resting because he gave uh, much love to this world uh, through his music uh, to all his friends, his family and uh, to even people he don't know but he always see people as uh, one people, one human being and that was uh, the most thing important I I can remember from him. So, yeah, I want to tell him that uh, yeah, his time on this earth has been really important for the humanity. Uh, the, you know, I will always have a space for him in my heart, in my soul, my spirit, and uh, all the time when I will be on stage, I will always thinking about him. You know. I will act like he's still behind me playing his guitar and giving me some good advice. So, Rastafari, please, General Chefari, reggae African singer from Ivory Coast, Ayman, please.
to say the world needs nothing. Well, hey, hey, you're gonna need the beam just like you. Oh, oh, what a run, jump, run, jump, run, jump. Boy, we like to run, jump, run, jump, run, the jump now. It's time we go around down this one pony town, yeah. Hey, hey, boy, we just around down, round down, round down. A flash of them skanks say I'm a son, understand? This is not the trees and I just jam down. No matter what you do and no matter what you say, sweet reggae music, tear down the place. Banal and I will dance hard. Every time we come, we rock the dance hall, y'all. Yes, Auntie Dread say me got me on call. Every time we come upon a dance hall, a rooty man, a rooty man, a real dance hall. Every time we come, we rock the dance hall, y'all. Yes, Auntie Dread say me really come down. Every time we come upon a dance hall, a better man, a better man, a good dance hall. At the foundation of the dance hall, y'all. Yes, Auntie Dread say me really come down. Every time we rock out this a dance hall, crucial and a rooty call a real dance hall. This a man a rock out this a dance hall, yeah. This dirty dead say me really bum bum. Every time we rock up on a dance hall, we go around jam, round jam right now. Lord, I just around jam, right down to the ground, yeah. Each time we go around jam, you know one pony town, yeah. Just a run down, run down, run down. Crucial and a rooty color, yes, dance hall. Every time I come, I rock the dance hall, y'all. Yes, Natty Dread, see me really bum bum. Every time me rock up on a dance hall. I bet your man, I bet your man, a good dance hall. At the foundation of the dance hall, y'all. Yes, Natty Dread, yeah, you got me on call. If we come to rock a this a dance hall, I go around down, round down, round down. Lord, he come around down, right down to the ground, yeah. Each time I go around down, in a your part of town, yeah. Hey, hey, Lord, I just a round down, round down, round down. I knew right off the bat that harmonica is just the perfect element for, for that type. It goes well with acoustic guitar. Willie, I, I've known him for so long, and I know that his, uh, he's been in the entertainment world for quite a while. I've heard some of his records, and uh, I called on him because I know he would fit. He would fit the bill, real, you know, just perfectly. And uh, we get along with each other. We talk all the time, you know, I mean, we're old friends, so well, that... We're both artists, we're both yeah. musicians, and yeah. we're both poets. He's a hell of a <laughs> painter. He said he was no Lord Ranger. Once upon a time in the wild, wild west, Said he was the best. Yes, Jama kick up a whole heap of dust. All over town, just kick up a fuss. Hey. He said he was a gambler. But he said he was no lone ranger. I'm looking for the tall, dark stranger. Watch out. Stone Cold Creator. He said, Tell Johnny Ringo, look out for me. Batman Brown can look out for me. Bad boy Billy better look out for me. Free Ramadan, South Iraq, your party. Say, One I Jack, come looking for me. Low down Slim, I'm a looking for me. The Lone Bush Whacker, come looking for me. To Ramadan, South Iraq, your party. Just the other day in the 
mine is more, much more, uh, it's reggae, but it's also got a lot of, say, style, and the style is more like Bo Diddley or something, the, the chanting, the talking, the rapping style. Oh, okay. you know, more like some, like a Bo Diddley kind of influence with a reggae beat, you know. But yeah, I just had to, yeah, like any song, you when you when you're a songwriter, you you're painting a picture, you know. So it has to have a beginning, it has to have a middle, and it has to have an end, a climax or whatever, you know. So that's the way I just saw if I were to make a movie, you know, mm -hmm. a wild western movie. You know, but have a reggae kind of hip hop twist to it, with all these characters. That's that's how I developed it, really. And I came up with the. I just sat down and I wrote it on the keyboard with that bass line. I just started playing that bass line in that little skank. The the doom, the boom, the boom, the boom, the boom, 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 the boom, the boom, the boom. You know, it all started right from that. Really, that's that was the very beginnings of it. Because it doesn't, it has a little break, but you know, when people hear it, they'll see that yeah, it, it's it's got some reggae, a little bit of um, hip hop in it that is very minimalist in its production. You know, doesn't have like seven different instruments. Uh, you know, you know what I mean, like a big band treatment at all. It's basically a drum and bass line and a harmonica that gives it that old Wild West flavor and a blues flavor to it. And uh, the Quaker that's played by um, Mike Olson from uh, Key Ingredients of African Soul. So, and uh, Ethan Steele is playing the uh, harmonica, which really gives it the flavor. Thank you, Hal, for the uh, beautiful music experiences uh, I got to share with you and, and your contribution to the community and your good gentlemanly spirit uh, the several times I, I met and interacted with you. So. Uh, you made a nice, a fine contribution to the to the world here, and uh, wish you best in your future journeys. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Daryl Kelly, A.K.A. D. Trent Kelly. When I'm on stage playing, uh, I'm a music producer and musician, of course, and I also do a 3D animation. So uh, the story goes like this. Mark uh, called me and uh, he said that uh, he wanted to put uh, together an animation for uh, Hal's uh, Tall Dog Stranger. And I said, yeah, okay, cool. We can do that. And he said, uh, okay, well, I'll pass you on the song. So he did. He passed on the song and I um, ended up, uh, you know, listening to it and learning it and trying to uh, get a story about it. And uh, so I had a couple more questions. I had to call him back because the question was, okay, you got a DJ that is uh, in the wild, wild west. And I'm like, yeah, can, you know, we had to put a spin on that. So he gave me some direction as to uh, which way to go. So, um, you know, he gave me some very nice creative direction, you know, such as the mic dropping on the guy's chest. You know. I thought it was kind of cool. So anyway, uh, I went back and thought about it. And I said, uh, okay, well, I need to get uh, I need to get some assets together for the uh, for the scene. So uh, I went and I got some assets, some three assets, uh, the characters and the environment, the the saloon that they were supposed to be in. And uh, I said, okay, well, now it's time for me to kind of like put the story together. So I did a little bit of storyboarding, you know, to get, try to get a consistency in the in the um, in the story so uh, it was time for me to put it together how did I do that I put in inside of a uh, 3d package you know you got something free something not so free and at any rate uh, as soon as I got them in there and got the materials and everything uh, you know kind of together uh, it was time for me to start doing some animation now the animation required me to have to move the bones because these uh, characters do have bones in them or if they don't you have to put them in there with the uh, 3d application and uh, you have to manipulate them to move the way you want them to move and uh, so i started out doing that okay after i got all the animation and everything together it was time then to uh, cut the scene 
So each one of these uh, sections were they were sectioned off in scenes. You have to put them together in uh, in a order. So after I got all of these things rendered out, it took about maybe three, maybe four days to get everything rendered out. Um, then I put them inside of a uh, video editing application, and I started uh, doing the uh, the assemblies and everything there, the right lighting and the uh, titling. And after that, it was all done. So uh, you know, I hope you uh, enjoy the the video, and uh, if you haven't seen it already, please do. All right, because I really enjoy doing it. All right, take care. Um, and like life and death is temporary like the earth so when you plant seed and grow it it's one big beautiful cycle and until we meet again in our next life how rest in peace <laughs> I wish, man. <laughs> I wouldn't be working at the U of A if I was. <laughs> I'd be getting my check, man. <laughs>